giant blue boom with a recent buzz around Z image models. The Qianwen team is keeping up. They finally released Qianwen Image Edit 2511. You can see their hugging face page right here. The name says 2511, even though we are almost in 2026. This suggests they spent a lot of time fine-tuning this model. I will link the page in the comments for you to check out. You can download the main models on this page. These are for Tianwen 2511, featuring BF16 and FP8. Next, I will show you the results of my testing. I have also uploaded the workflows to Running Hub. You can download these workflows for free through the link below. Registering gets you 1,000 RH coins plus 100 daily points. This allows you to test new models online for free. No need to set up a complex system environment. Alright, I created three workflows in total. Two are for comparing the differences with the 2509 version. The other updates are previous auto storyboard workflow. First is our single image editing workflow. We're using three control codes here. 2509, 2511 with Aurora and with acceleration. Let's take a quick look at the workflow. Here we upload the image and set the maximum resolution. This is where the prompt text is entered and the generated image will be saved here once processed. This constitutes the standard workflow for edit 2509. The workflow for edit 2511 remains largely unchanged, though two points warrant attention. One thing to note is that the VAE does not need a direct connection. We need to connect the reference lighting through VAE encode. Then, link it to our positive and negative conditions. This helps minimize pixel drift on the character. Also, I suggest using the BF16 version of 2511. If you are low on VRAM, you can choose the pruned FP8 version. However, the FP8 version often shows obvious color tint issues. For the acceleration LoRa, I also recommend the FP32 version. The non-accelerated version uses official settings, CFG4, and 40 steps. Alright, let's try the first group. This test focuses on identifying the head. We are changing the hair and adding glasses on a small face. You can see 2509 clearly enlarged the subject, but it still followed the prompt requirements. The 2511 accelerated version did a great job too. This one is 2511 without acceleration LoRa. The image here might be a bit degraded, looking like an overfitting issue. The face also has some issues, so use it as a simple reference. Comparing 2509 with the original, you can see the character is enlarged. This is 2511. It met the prompt but with slight pixel drift. The overall result is still an improvement. This is another set, also modifying the face and hairstyle. You can see that both follow the requirements of the prompt, but 2509 still shows significant character enlargement. The 2511 added controls this well, and the textures fit perfectly, and the version without Laura also has some flaws. The CFG and step values in CompuI might need some adjustment. We will not look closely at the non laura version after this. We will focus on the comparison between 2509 and 2511. Next, let us look at the comparison with the original image. 2509 also has serious subject enlargement. 2511 really shows big progress in reducing pixel drift here. But a little bit remains. E-commerce designers might still need ways to fix this. But for general image generation, you can feel the pixel drift has improved. Next group, we are testing the ability to change angles. The character turns 90 degrees from the front to the side. Relatively speaking, 2511 has stronger semantic understanding. You can see after turning 90 degrees, the eyes are looking forward. But for 2509, every role could probably fix this in terms of maintaining consistency. I think 2511 is stronger. Let us look at the comparison with the original image again. The character turned and only the edited area changed with no background drift. Normally, we would have to draw a mask manually to achieve this. This is an improvement over version 2509. Hide is unchanged too. 
this group changes the camera angle to a top-down view. In terms of semantic understanding, 2511 is relatively stronger. Perspective is great, blur is there, and face consistency is better. But unfortunately, the face looks oily and very AI-like when it is close up. In this case, 2509 actually looks better than 2511. This is a comparison of the top-down angle. You can see 2511 understands better. With better tilt control, it is the effect I was looking for. This is a prompt for putting armor on the main character. For materials, 2511 has better reflections than 2509. 2509 feels a bit plastic, but 2511 hits the metal texture. For character repainting, 2509 still has the enlargement issue. It basically repainted the entire scene. On the 2511 side, the scene changed, but enlarged less. But the position of the character is still relatively correct. Next is a comparison of style transformation. This tests the model's ability to change styles without extra aura. The goal here is to switch to a pen and ink black and white polka dot style. Both can do it, but I personally think 2511 is more aesthetic. Even the version without Laura works fine. The details are even better than the Laura version since it ran for 40 steps. So for stylized images with more detail, consider the non-accelerated workflow. Just lower the CFG and the step count slightly. You do not need that many steps. This is the comparison for 2509, and this is for 2511. 2511 is definitely optimized in terms of pixel trim. Now, for camera zoom control group, the difference is very clear here. Shenmue 2511 overall still feels a bit oily. Compared to Z image, the quality does not quite meet our long expectations. It especially looks like an AI image at first glance, but we can fix that with Laura. That was our single image workflow, and next is the three image fusion comparison. Alright, let us look at our workflow. Here, you can upload images, and here is our prompt. Again, here is the resolution setting. Here is where you download the output. The workflow has not changed much, except for two more image inputs. You can choose the original or the pruned FP8 version for lower Vero. Everything else is the same. Just remember not to connect the VAE to the clip. Now, let us look at the case comparisons. First, the model outfit change ability. We are not using any functional LoRa, just testing the model itself. The prompt is to put her in Christmas clothes at a desolate location. It follows the prompt, but the lighting does not blend very well, and her saturation is a bit too high. The sky is blue with clouds, but the generated image has backlighting. It transferred the backlighting from the original image. This really needs a new tonal match. For the second set, I changed the scene to snow. Same outfit in the snow. The backlighting issue is solved here, so there is some luck involved. Check the pixel drift issue. There is a little bit. This might depend on the input image size. We can test more later. Next is style reference. Image 1 follows image 2 style in image 3 scene. Looking at the results, it is pretty good. The aesthetics are nice, as this was generated without any style Laura. So the model itself is capable of style transformation, okay? Next, let us look at the group photo feature. Here I ask for girls from image 1 and 2 to take a photo in image 3 scene. This tests the model's ability to maintain face consistency for multiple people. You can see the faces are handled quite well. But when the clothes were transferred, they clearly changed. Details are gone. Here is a test for object transfer. I asked the girl from image 1 to hold the doll from image 2 in the snow. The snow is there and the trees are there. It is more like turning the cherry blossom park into a snowy version with the doll. But you can see the doll change a lot. This might need a specific Laura or more re-rolls. Anyway, I tried several times and could not get the doll perfectly in her hands. Alright, that covers the single and multi-image workflow testing. And here we have the same scene storyboard workflow we made before. I have also updated it to the 2511 version. This workflow mainly involves uploading a reference photo here. 
Then you can copy this instruction to an LLM like Gemini. It will output your desired Beam storyboard in this specific format. Then this node will automatically split it into multiple prompts. You can run many images at once. These images are based on the base image with different angles and poses. They try to maintain face consistency even without a character Laura. If you add a character Laura, the results will be even better. After finishing, pick the best shots to generate a video. That is all for today. Models and workflows are in the description. Are you satisfied with the performance of this model? Personally, I am still looking forward to Z Image open sourcing their added model. Competition drives motivation, so feel free to share your thoughts in the comments. If you found this helpful, please like and subscribe. See you next time.